Hi everyone! In this video, I want to continue our discussion of recursion by looking at some additional problems that can be solved using recursive functions. In particular, we're going to look at linked list traversal algorithms. So in order to write some linked list traversal algorithms using recursive functions, I needed to add in some linked list code to our recursion fun code base that we have going. So all I've done up to this point to get us ready to start writing some recursive linked list functions includes copying and pasting our linked list.h and our linked list.cpp files over from our linked list fun code base, which was covered in a few videos a few videos ago. In main, at the top, I've just included that linked list.h. And down here, I'm just creating a linked list object and appending the nodes 10, 20, 30, and then printing out the list. So here's that output from display list. We've got a singly linked list with a head pointer only, uh, 10 points to 20, 20 points to 30, and then 30 is the last node in our list, so it points to null. So this is just a singly linked list with a head pointer that stores integer values in its nodes. Pretty traditional. Uh, link list that we've got going here. So let me show you our display list. Here it is. Just to recap, display list kind of uses our bread and butter while loop for traversing a link list. So it starts out with this cur node, which is a node pointer that starts at head. And while cur node isn't equal to null, then it's going to print out the value in cur node and then advance cur node to the next node in the list. So once the next node in the list is null, meaning we've just traversed the entire list, then this Boolean condition will be false and will break out and then print out null. So this is how I'm getting kind of those nice little arrow links like head points to 10, 10 points to 20, 20 points to 30, and 30 points to null. So this while loop here is, like I said, it's kind of our bread and butter for traversing singly linked lists, right? We start at the head, uh, while we haven't reached the end of the list, then we advance each node, uh, cur node, through each node in the list using the next pointer. This iteration right here can be solved using recursion, and it can be solved using recursion quite cleanly. The only issue is what we're going to do is essentially say each one of these iterations of the while loop is going to be a call to our recursive display list function which means that we're going to need a parameter of type node pointer that represents cur node. So cur node is going to be an argument to each one of our recursive calls as it gets advanced through the list. So in order to do this, we're actually going to have to define two functions. One is going to be a public member function of the linked list class that can be called from main, just like we're calling display list. So something like list.display list recursive. Okay, no arguments, very clean uh, call, just like our call with display list. Okay, but remember, like I said, the recursive solution needs to have a parameter for that node pointer cur node. So back over here in linked list.cpp, this node pointer cur node is going to need to be passed in. So I'm going to need a second function that actually does the recursion. So this display list re uh, recursive that I'm calling here is going to be the public interface that code like main can call, and then it's going to call the recursive solution passing in head. All right, let's do it, and I think it'll make more sense as we start to code it up. All right, so here we are in linked list.h. Note that our node struct is private, so even if we wanted to allow main to pass in a node pointer such as a head pointer, it wouldn't be able to because the definition for node is private to linked list. So main can't even make nodes or have node references even if it wanted to. All right, so display list, we're gonna have a display list recursive, which is gonna be public facing. And display list recursive is gonna call a private helper function which is actually going to do the recursion. And in order to do that, it's gonna to need to have a parameter of type node pointer. This is going to be cur node, okay? 
each iteration of that while loop, we're advancing Kerr node. So each call to our helper function, we're going to advance Kerr node. Okay, that's going to be our node pointer parameter right here. All right. So let me head over to linklist.cpp and we will start defining these functions. All right, so let's start with our public interface function, display list recursive. All display list recursive needs to do is call display list recursive helper. And I know that name is kind of long, but it's very verbose and pass in head. Okay, this is the key part right here, right? Head is private, it is of type node, with our node pointer, and node is private as well, right? So main cannot get access to head, but we can with display list recursive because it's a member function of the link list class. So this is our public interface. And I'll just make a note here in case you take a look at this later to remember why we're doing this. So node and head are private. So that's why we need this public interface function to kind of kick off our recursion, passing in head, which is private, of type node pointer, and node is private. All right, so now this is gonna be our display list recursive helper, and it's going to accept a node pointer called kernode. So there goes kernode, it is gone. I'm not gonna worry about printing out the head pointer at this point. We can come back to it later if we want, but for now, I'm not too concerned with it. All right, first, with any recursive function, we think about our base case. When do we stop recursing? Well, when did we stop traversing with our while loop? We stopped when kernode was equal to null. So we can actually just adapt this to our base case. If kernode is equal to null, then we're gonna stop recursing. We've reached the end of the list. We'll print out null. If we make it right here, we know that cur node is not equal to null, which means we've got some work to do. And that work we've gotta do is printing out the value that cur node points to. So I can just leave this as is. And then the progress towards our Boolean condition being false, that terminology is for iteration. Let's update it for recursion. And let's say recursive step or recursive call. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna call display list recursive helper, that long name, again, passing in cur node next. Okay, so this is the advancement right here, which gets us one step closer to our base case. Our base case is when cur node is null. That has an obvious solution. What should we do? Print out a list that is empty. Well, we're just gonna print out null. All right. So just to recap, our main is gonna call our display list recursive, which is going to invoke our private helper function, passing in head. Okay, head is what we're gonna call cur node for all of our uh, calls to display list recursive helper. Before that originating call from line 67, cur node is pointing to head. We're gonna check to make sure is cur node null. It's not. We're gonna print out the value at head, and then we're going to advance to heads next, which will be the second node in the list. And we'll keep repeating until we print out the value in the last node. The last node's next pointer is null. So we'll be passing null in for cur node, which is our perfect base case. Cur node equal null, null equal null, true. Print out null and we return. And then all of these recursive calls, including the originating call, will return to line 61, in which case there's nothing else to do. So we'll be able to return back to display list recursive, which will return back to main. All right, let's try it. All right, there we have it, 10, 20, 30, and null. All right, looks good. Now, remember I said, well, I'm not too concerned about printing out head right now, so I deleted it. And the reason is I actually will have to add an if statement to check to see if cur node is head in order to print out head arrow. And I can add it, no problem. It's just gonna make our solution a little bit longer. But if I wanted to do this, 
all I would need to do is check to see if cur node is equal to head. If it is, then I'm going to simply print out head. And now the output looks identical. All right, so this is optional, kind of more for aesthetics. Uh, so feel free to leave it in or take it out. But if you really wanted to match our original display list, then we're going to have to check to see, is this the first call to display list recursive helper, which is checking to see if cur node stores the same address as head. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do next. We are going to perform our display list recursive and our display list recursive helper again, but this time for printing the list out in reverse. Okay, and with a singly linked list, that can be a little bit tricky, right? Because you only have the head pointer and you only have your next pointers. So it's really kind of a one way traversal, right? You go from beginning to end. So here's gonna be a fun way to print out the list in reverse while still traversing from beginning to end. The solution is actually going to be very similar to our character by character display string that printed out those characters in reverse. All right, so I'm going to just kind of do a massive copy here. And I'm going to do display list reverse. Make it a little bit shorter here. Display list reverse helper. So we're going to print out the contents of the list in reverse order. Before I finish this function for doing this in reverse instead of forward, I'm going to head over to the header file and make sure I add these two prototypes. And then in main, I'm going to need to call that public interface function display list reverse. All right, now we just have to finish that helper function and we're ready to compile and run. All right, so here we are display list reverse helper. Okay. So we're still going to be starting at the head of the list. So I'm not going to want to print out head here. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this for now. We'll bring it back in. So our base case is still going to be cur node equal to null, in which case we'll print out null. That's still correct. Okay, now down here, we don't want to print out the value of our nodes as we traverse them. Okay, as we're pushing these calls onto the call stack, we want to print out the value of the node as we're popping these calls off the call stack. So I'm going to move this down here and we're not going to start printing out the values of nodes until we get to our base case and we start returning, right? The only way we can get to 83 is after 82 returns. And the only way any of these calls to 82 are going to return is after we've hit our base case. And on 78, we have our first return from our base case call. Okay. So let me save this and print it out. Okay, so here we're seeing null 30, 20, 10. So it's actually really close to being done just with that one little swap of the order here. All right, so here's what we should do, okay? We should make sure that our uh, arrows are pointing the correct direction, right? So they need to be pointing this way. And let's get rid of this endl here too. That way null and 30 are gonna be on the same line. I'm gonna to need to move this onto the other side as well. Okay, I want this arrow to be pointing uh, the opposite direction and on the left side, not the right side of our node values there. All right, so this looks better. So 10 points to 20 and 20 points to 30 and 30 points to null. All right, great. Okay, so once again, I deleted that head and now it's time to bring it back in. 
Okay, now it's time to bring it back in. And we want a new line character after we print out head two so that our prompt is on that next line. All right, so I took it out, time to put it back in. The key is we don't wanna do it at the beginning. Remember, we're not gonna print out the values in our nodes until we've traversed all the way through the list and we're popping off the call stack in kind of that stack reverse order. All right, so down here, this is where I'm gonna do my test, okay? If cur node is equal to head, then I wanna print out head with this arrow and an endl. All right, there we have it. Our list is being printed out in reverse order and our links are still intact and accurate. So head points to 10, 10 points to 20, 20 points to 30, and 30 points to null. And we're printing out our list in reverse order. All right, so to recap in this video, we went through how to traverse a link list using recursion. And the main idea behind it is we're gonna still have that cur node, node pointer, but it's gonna be an argument to each one of our calls where we advance cur node a little bit closer to our base case. And our base case is when we've reached the end of the list, which is cur node is null. And this will work for an empty list as well, right? Because if I pass in, say, null here, then what we're gonna have is cur node already immediately pointing to null. So cur node equal to null will be true, we'll print out null, and we will return. All right, just one last thing to point out is, one more time, why did we have to write these two functions? Well, because we didn't want our main to have to pass in a pointer to the first node of the list for a few reasons. One, it's clunky. Two, it can't even do so because node is private to link list. So we wanted to have the same interface as display list, which is no arguments, just operating on the invoking list object which means we needed to have this kind of public interface uh, function right here, member function of the linked list class, that will kick off the recursion by passing in a pointer to the first node in the list. All right, that is it. Hopefully you see how linked list traversal goes hand in hand with recursion. Thank you for watching.